What's up everybody? Thank you for clicking on the video. If you're new to my channel, my name is William Ramos. I'm a glass artist based here in Miami, Florida. And I also go by Woody That Glass Guy on Instagram and here on YouTube. Alright, so let's get into it. Today I'm going to be making this piece right here that you see in front of you. It's one of my simple rigs, but I love the simplicity of this one. It has the wig wag section in the middle, all the greens and blues. I really love how it all matches. So here are the materials I'm going to be using. I got a 38 millimeter tube, some wigwag tube, which is a vac stack, and some color rods. Here's the slime rod and the aqua azul rod. That's basically going to be the chameleon. All right. So the first step I'm going to do is I'm going to get the aqua azul rod and layer the slime over it. That's what I'm doing right now. And like I said, this is going to be the chameleon in the end. You'll see. This is the effect I get after I layer the slime. It causes like a the green hue over the blue, which I really like. Right now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to get that gather that I have. I'm going to flatten it out. Get a punty, attach it, and just stretch out the tail slightly. Right here is important to get a nice even tail because if not, later on when you curl it, it's going to give you issues. Yeah, take your time, baby. There we go. It's getting a little wiggly, but it's going to work out in the end. You'll see. And don't worry. Um, Every process I go, I'm going to show you step by step. So right now, what I'm doing is I'm stretching out the head portion. Don't worry. I'm going to give you a side shot when I'm done with it. And since this chameleon has horns... I have to make a base on top of the head to give me a nice platform to add the horns comfortably. Because if not, it's just the, the horns go into the green and it looks weird. For some reason, it just looks better like this when I add another little color on top. So here's what I got right now. I got the tail, the basic shape of the body, and the basic shape of the head. So I'm going to continue on and put some more details now. The first detail I add is the mouth. I have this little sculpting tool, very cheap, but efficient, and it works really well. Here I go. There we go, and now I have the crease of the lips, and I'm gonna work my way up now. I put two dots of aqua azul for the eyeballs, and a little bit of white, and just a little dot of black for the pupil. you'll see Boom. all right so now that I have the eyes I'm gonna work on the limbs at first I just put like a little gather of on each section that I need the limb and I build the limb from there you'll see what I mean now just continue watching and you'll see right here I'm making sure all the weld points are nice and welded in because if not you're gonna have some cracking issues while you're assembling the details so now that I got that the way I like how you know how it's looking, nice and welded in, everything's even. I'm gonna go ahead and add the other part of the limbs. And this is gonna lead on to the mouthpiece. You'll see later on in the video. It's looking real pretty. This this process took me a long time as well. You know, um, if you go back on my Instagram, you can see the progress of the chameleons and how they've it's gotten way better over time. So now that I got the limbs, I got the basic shape. I'm going to add a little more detail and stretch out the elbows and get some creases in between the legs. You'll see what I mean right now. I'm going to go in. Put some creases on the legs and in the inside. To give it more of a, you know, more of a realistic effect, but still cartoony. By the way, that's Alexander the Great in the back there. Guys are savage. You gotta go check him out on Instagram. But look, by the way, check out the little details on the on the elbow. You see how I stretched it out and with those little creases on the bottom of the legs. So now I'm gonna go ahead and add the dots to the back. I have no reason why I'm laughing there. I completely forgot. But he was probably talking some shit. <laughs> Alright, so after the dots, you're gonna see the effect how it looks. It's looking sexy. You 
you can kind of see it from far away but don't worry I'm gonna give you a close-up shot now look at that and I still haven't added the horns it really looks good I love how it's coming out I'm pretty proud of this piece there we go I'm adding the horns super concentrated <laughs> making sure the horns are melted in but in the same time I can't overheat it because then it just becomes a glob it doesn't look like a horn anymore so there we go now that I got all the details of the body I'm gonna go ahead and put it in the kiln and let it chill and work on the piece now so here we go I'm gonna get a vac stack section I forgot the technical name of this tubing but it's a golden gate and um, it's green, it has green hues, blues, and these sparkly colors in it, which are, I think really look dope. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stretch it out. And I'm going to do some switchbacks or reversals, whichever what you want to call it. I'm going to go ahead and get this tube and stretch it out. And for those who are not familiar, this tube is literally sticks of color vacuum sealed inside of a clear tube and stretched out. To make this there's no paint involved or nothing like that you'll be surprised you know some people actually think it's paint but it ain't it ain't paint keep in mind this piece took about six hours to make six to seven hours and I fit it into this 25 minute video so I hope you enjoy it and I hope you watch it all through right here you know I'm basically going to start the process of doing the wigwags by bending the two backwards and continuously spinning while I'm heating that section up. You're going to see me do this a couple times, so don't worry. You don't have to stop it here and reverse. You'll see me do it right now. And for those who are kind of lost of what's going on right now, I'm making the section right here. It's basically going to be this section that you see. Here we go. We're going to continue. I'm heating up just right after the first wig that I did and if you notice I bend the tube back slightly and I keep on spinning it's very important that you you can't stop spinning because then your your wig wag gets out of gets out of whack and it looks all disproportionate so here we go I, I continue doing this to the whole entire tube you're gonna see here I go again and don't worry, I fast forward, you know, just keep on looking, watch this, watch this, watch the magic, watch the magic happen, I should be a singer too, ooh, look at that, and again, I'm going to continue working it, you'll see. Here I go. If you guys are trying to practice this and pick this up, you know, hit me up if you have any uh, any questions and I'm happy to answer them. So you see I'm bending it back and continue spinning. I have other videos that I explain this as well. So if you want, you can go back and see that video as well too. It's the it's the one that I make a Sherlock. It's I think two or three videos of be behind this one. So here we go. I I fast forward it to me we're already done with the whole tube so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna make it a big ball section I'm gonna condense it and make it into a big bubble the thing that is hard about this is that it's not just heating it up condensing it and blowing it into a bubble you gotta keep everything straight and nice because if not it just gets all twisted and it's not something it's not the effect you're trying to achieve well as, as you know the effect that I'm trying to achieve for this piece if you're trying to do that you know go ahead there ain't no wrong way to do it so what you see me here doing is I'm just with the handle I'm heating it up condensing it bringing it in together and blowing once I get it nice and condensed I keep on bringing it together making sure that the wall thickness is nice and even that's super important while you're doing this because if you have an uneven wall thickness you have risk of cracking and risk of just misshaping when you go ahead and shape your rig. So here we go. This is the basics part. 
I'm going to get this bubble and I'm going to pop a hole on the side that I want to connect the piece to. You'll see what I mean if you continue watching. You'll see. It's basically going to be the, metal, the middle section right here. It's going to be that. All right, right here you see me doing is I'm trying to make sure the terminations are perfect and I'm putting my handle and flame cutting to the other side. There we go. Now I'm making sure the terminations are nice and pretty. I'm going to continue working. I get my glass sophieta that I made. It's basically a blow tube. <laughs> And I blow out the other side. Just enough to make it even. But I'm going to rework it now. So this is the section of 38 millimeter tubing. I'm going to go ahead and blow it up. Make it into a nice doorknob shape. And put a, put a hole on the top. So now I'm able to attach the prep that I just made. This right here takes a lot of time. That's why I fast forward it. Because if not, this video will be six hours long and chill. <laughs> I'm not trying to talk for six hours. And, I'm no, and I know you people are not trying to watch a six-hour video. So here we go. I put that section. I heat it up with the big flame. And you'll see what it becomes right now. Boom. Now that I got this, I'm ready to add the other clear section on top. Which is this section right here. So now we're going to work on this section and we're going to put the clear on top. Pop a hole. Make sure it's centered. And get to doing it. Doing it and doing it and doing it. Yeah. <laughs> Bear with me. I'm trying to have, you know, trying to, trying to. I'm over here sitting down watching this video of myself and doing a voiceover. <laughs> Alright, so now we got the clear on top. And we got to work it. Notice I have a plug on there. Shout out to Snoopy. He gave me that little thing. I plug it up to have some pressure. If you notice, I have a blow tube connected to the other side. Allowing me to blow while I spin. So while I'm heating up the clear and the color. I'm blowing as well, causing pressure to open up the weld making this so this section is basically going to be the top of the rig and the other side is going to be the bottom so right now I'm going to switch axis put my blow tube handle on the top side to be able to work the bottom and you'll see what I mean now I open up a hole and now I'm able to attach another blow tube to this section cut off the other side and work the bottom just like this Boom. It's just looking pretty. It's looking nice. Looking nice. I'm pretty proud of the shape. I like it. So what I'm showing there is I'm going to pop a hole in the bottom and switch axis, axis I'm sorry, once again to be able to work it from the bottom and be able to weld on the mouthpiece and the chameleon and, and the joint fitting. You'll see. Making sure it's nice and centered. Oh, yeah. There we go. This is a 16 millimeter tube I'm going to be using for the mouthpiece. We're going to be making two little Maria sections, just like you see right here. That's the little part that we're making right now. I'm going to add my little punty. I'm going to go ahead and make the Maria's. I'm not sure why they're called Maria's. Um, if somebody knows the real reason, please <laughs> leave it down in the comments. I would love to know. I've heard a bunch of stories, but I don't know which one's true. So right here, if you've never done one, um, they're they're easy once you get a, once you get them down. But to get them to get them good, they're not that easy. It's a lot of practice, you know. Continue, and you will be able to do it. So I'm going to go ahead and do two because I like the way it looks. I like the way it looks when you put two Maria's. 
I want two Marias. There we go, we got two Marias. I'm thinking to myself, damn, it looks pretty good. Let me show it to the camera. Hey. It's nice and straight. Uh, it needs a little work on the side, but I worked it out later. So now that the mouthpiece is ready to go, I'm going to go ahead and start working on the chameleon once again. Now I'm going to get my punty. I'm going to switch ax axis on the chameleon to be able to curl up the tail. You're going to see me do it. Now I flame cut the little tail part. Stretch it out a little, little more to give it a nice effect when I curl it up. So here we go. You see me stretching it. And the way I curl it up is I get up my master tool. You'll see me right now. I'm getting a little ahead of myself. There we go. I'm going to start curling, curling it up. Little by little. when you're doing this it's you gotta it's all about heat base you gotta you gotta always remember that whatever is hot is gonna move so whatever you want to move or manipulate you need to heat it up but you need to heat it up in the right section if you notice I'm always keeping the top of the tail a little colder than the bottom because the bottom is where I want it to bend but I want the top to be a little cold so it doesn't leave my tool marks there's these little techniques that you don't really see it unless I um, unless I'm explaining it. So here we go. This is what I got with the chameleon. I'm really happy how it looks. I love the colors on it. So right now I'm ready to connect them, and I'm gonna do that right now. Right here it's kind of tricky because I gotta make sure that all four legs are evenly heated when I attach. Because if not, that thing goes crazy and it's hard to break out the the punty without a leg snapping off if it's not completely melted. Right here, I'm breaking out the punny. Peek. I get the mini torch, polish off the little punny mark, and weld in the legs. What's cool about this too is that the leg supports itself. It's basically four support points for this little, you know, chameleon. It makes it super strong. I've had customers drop their rig and the chameleon won't break off. I love how the tail looks. Look at that little curl. If you don't stretch it out, you know, it doesn't get that effect. Oh, there we go. That's Snoopy. Snoopy Glass. Go follow him as well. He's a savage. All right. So now that I get the mouthpiece ready, I'm going to put it in the kiln, and now I'm working on the base once again. I'm going to pop a hole to be able to weld in the mouthpiece. You'll see. He's probably telling me some dirty joke, and I'm probably... <laughs> I don't know. Right here, I'm just prepping out the hole to be able to attach the mouthpiece. Just making it, puffing it out really slow. I'm getting it nice and right before I pop it. I need to attach the blow tube because it makes it a lot easier to pop that hole correctly. So here I go. Clean that off real quick. Once I pop the hole, I'm going to make sure that I open it up to get a nice flare. You'll see. If you don't do this process right here and you have a hole that's coming into the piece, your weld will never be clean enough to like look flush. That's the trick to getting a nice seamless weld. So here we go. I have my mouthpiece on a big punty to be able to support it later on. You're going to see what I do. It's a bridging technique. I'm going to attach the mouthpiece. And then I'm going to heat up the stick and bridge it to the, to my handle. And that allows me to weld in the mouthpiece with a support 
not allowing it to move all over the place while it's hot. This is tricky because it's a time sensitive uh, task. If I take too long doing this and I jump back to the weld, it's going to instantly crack and then your whole day's work is just effed, you know. And you don't want that. You don't want that. You don't want no crack. Cracks are whack. <laughs> so we go. I'm here melting in the weld. Trying to get it as seamless as possible. And as flush with all the curves. I use gravity. Right here you're going to see me put the piece upside down while I'm melting it. You'll see right now. Right here. I'm putting it upside down. Trying to make the molten glass flow in the direction that I want while I'm giving little puffs with the blow tube that's attached in the bottom. There we go. Now that I have my mouthpiece attached to the can, I'm ready to work on the fitting. My camera died while I was making the joint, so I couldn't film the joint process, but this is it. I'm making sure it fits perfectly before I go and attach it to the piece. Right here I'm gonna attach it and then do the same thing with the punty. I'm gonna stretch it, I'm gonna bend it backwards to the mouthpiece and create a support to allow me to weld it correctly. You'll see. I attach it making sure it's nice and straight and upright. Now I'm going to bend it back and attach to the support. Again, time sensitive. I got to do this quick. Boom. Now I got to weld to the support and I'm able to weld the, the connection perfectly. This is the thing. You got to take your time. Make sure you do things right because if not, you're going to waste your time. Puffing out the weld, making sure it looks pretty. I'm going to use my blow tube for this. There's Snoopy in the background. <laughs> there we go. Now we're ready to take off the supports. My followers have asked me before to see the end process. Well, here you go. I'm going to show you all the way to the end. Me taking out the supports, the crazy way I do it. Oh, yeah. Here it goes. Boom. Yeah, it looks crazy, but it's not really. It's a control break. That's a cold seal on the fitting there that I know when I snip that, nothing's going to happen. It's just going to break where I want it to. So there we go. Now I'm fire polishing it, making sure I have no marks. I'm going to get the fitting and make sure the fitting fits perfect before I move on. Right here I'm warming it up, making sure I got some carbon on it to allow it to slide into the glass and not stick. That's why the, the joint is all black like that. Boom. See I slide it in there and making sure it fits nice and snug and to the perfect spot and boom. Now the rig's 95% done. I gotta take the mouthpiece section off, make it pretty open up the hole and then I gotta take it off the the handle so we're almost done if you're still here watching I really appreciate you don't forget to like comment and subscribe it makes a huge difference for me a difference for me and um, believe me I get super happy every time I see a little number go up I know it's superficial but it's something that creates progress look at that I really liked how this piece came out I'm really I'm pretty happy that I filmed the process as well so right now here's the final step I got to take off the handle I'm using a pair of finishing tools it's basically barbecue tongs with Kevlar wrapped on the tips I take out the handle and now I'm gonna pick off the excess glass while melting in the excess as well so it to fit in perfect if you
if you have any questions for any of the steps that you saw today, you can go ahead and leave it in the comments or message me on Instagram. I'll be happy to answer you. I love answering questions. I love helping people. If I could, I would. All right. So don't be shy. Hit me up. I always respond. So right now you see me, I'm heating up the bottom, making sure everything's nice and even before I finish it off and put it in the kiln. Boom. Put it on the graphite. That's the finished piece. Put it in the kiln. Boom shakalaka. Again, thank you for watching. For real, for real, I really appreciate you guys. And here's the piece.